go in here and ah and tag some right. people. Let me yeah. cut this down. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? We just right. stopping on here. I'm getting ready to share this live with some folk. And you're going to share this live with some folk. And when y'all come on here, y'all share this live with some folk. Share the live with some folk. Mm -hmm. Share the live with some folk. Share the live with some folk. <laughs> share the live with some folk. Okay. Let's see. Boom, boom. What are you doing? Sending it in people's messengers? Mm hmm. Why not? Oh, okay. Because, of course, why not? <laughs> So I guess I'll just send it to some people, I guess. Yeah, I'm sending it to some people now as we speak. Okay. Okay, y'all, we, we coming on. We just we just uh yeah. tagging some people. Mm -hmm. Excuse us. <laughs> we gonna come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, gonna come boy. on here and start teaching y'all mm -hmm. what's what's what what's going on, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm almost done. You, you almost, almost done. done? No, I'm not almost done. Well, are you are you sending the same? You probably sending the same people the stuff mm -hmm. I'm sending the people to. I love the whole assumption that you just made. Oh, I know you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, okay, I think that's all. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost. It's almost all. It's almost all, oh, y'all. Oh, we. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. You think that's it? Yeah. You sure? Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep, that's it. Okay, we okay. hear y'all. All right. All right, so man, what up, Sonequa? What's up? What up, Curtis? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, the people. Our let's, see, people. let's go. All right, yeah, our people hopping in. Okay, good evening. So, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm just trying to drop a little bit. Y'all sure? Just... Oh, I did it, baby. I did it. I got it. You got it. Yeah, I got it. We okay, good. We good. We good. Okay, cool. All right, then we good. Wifey said we good. So, um, the thing is, man. <clears throat> To be honest, I never really uh, thought about that. I never really thought this far off into like the lives that we're doing. And basically, it's because of the information that we dig into to give to you guys. And then it's like we dig into so much information because we want to make sure that y'all really get what we feel like y'all really need to get. And it ends up being so much that we got to do a part two and a part three and a part four. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, um, you know... I'm I'm just I'm sitting there and I'm like, dang, so yeah, okay, so where did we leave off? Uh what what were we talking about? You don't know where we left off at? Well yeah. We we're talking about how young Christianity. Oh, was you do born. remember. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. she was just asking I never really just... thought about it though, like I never thought we'd be doing this like this to, you know, keep it going like this. But anyway. Okay, okay. What we what we are actually going to segue into is these similar historical stories and patterns that mirror the life of Jesus right and so we really want to sincerely kind of open up the floor I think I'm gonna be like pushing my wife a little bit more to like really pay attention to the comments so that we can engage you guys in that way instead of just focusing on giving the information so much we're gonna give information but we really would like for you guys to engage and ask questions and kind of get your thought process on things as we're delivering it right because um, to just be throwing information out there and to not know if whether people are not are really receiving it or not just like what are your thoughts about it is helpful to us right to know if these are really being um, useful and helpful to you so um, what we did talk about we got into how young Christianity was and we talked about getting God for yourself we utilized some scriptures in that um, and and that's the thing that we do too. Again, the whole reason why do we do this? Why can you kind of help explain why it is we really do this? What what kind of brought this about? 
why it is we really do what what we're doing now, which is a lie <laughs> about the topics that we talk about, babe. Because people you know, need what? to know the truth. <laughs> okay, so because for, for one, people need to know the truth. You know, uh, people deal with a lot of uh, he say she say mm-hmm. in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, he say she say. Mm-hmm. He say she say, or I might have read once or twice. Okay, that's what you know, and then they go and they. Uh, they base their whole entire life off of he say, she say, and yeah. I might have read once or twice. Wow. Like, but, you yeah. know, in order for a person to get to their freedom, mm-hmm. I'm going to need them to do more than that. They're going to have to do more than that. They're going to have to go deeper. They're going to have to really ask. They're going to really have to seek, and they're going to really have to knock. And that's what we've been doing for the past seven and a half years really asking Hmm. knocking and and seeking and to see the things that have been manifested in our lives is like crazy amazing and we're the type of people that we don't like to just hold everything to ourselves right and when you you say i gotta say this though when you say the, the word truth when you use that word people need to know the truth well then, I'm just gonna be real. I'm gonna be even more transparent and more real. You can say, that. "Man, stop! This info is desperately needed." <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so it much, is. Curtis. It really is. Um, and hey, you know what I'm saying, Curtis and his wife Tammy. They they about this life too. Yeah, we gotta hop on the live again. Yeah. What's up, yeah. Tank? Yeah, hey, Yolanda. yeah. See, okay, hey, good. So, yeah, our people showing up. All yeah. y'all, Deborah. Hey, all y'all. So I think before we did, we talked about a lot of things. Hallucinogenic plants, right? Kind of like their role. Even the words, some of the words that um, uh, people that are really tied into a religious box, and they may not realize it, right? They're really tied to religion and not more so like uh, open. To to seeking and knocking and 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 really asking questions outside of the Bible. Here's the thing, though, that we really gonna get to tonight is that this is why you need to ask those questions that takes you outside of the Bible because the information that hmm. every leader. Of course, yeah, of course. Water that just meant that the water is really, really good. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought and it meant that it just squirted through the, the straw. When that I too, it but up. it was really good, and you just probably was trying to use being greedy and trying to get so much that you just couldn't handle okay, it. Okay, well, it's gonna dry. Whatever. Yeah. Right. So that information, though, that you're being told by quote unquote leadership to say those books don't mean anything, and the information you're talking about, that's rubbish. That's nothing. Well, the Bible gives major references to the stuff that people say is rubbish and that we shouldn't touch, like astrology, right? It goes into symbolism, which if you dig into the symbolism, right, and and you reading the word, this is probably why a lot of people don't really even understand the word, because they reading about cherubims, and we know cherubims, and we think cherubims are just angels, Mm -hmm. That's only one form of a cherubim. There's three other very popular forms of cherubims that's used symbolically throughout religiosity all over the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. Symbolism all over the world. And we're going to get into this. We're talking about other gods. Christians or people who are really religious that subscribe to Christianity especially get really heated upset and bothered by the fact that someone will say that there is another guy that even exists and you start talking about it and i want you guys to know we we want you to know that the bible gives reference to them and acknowledges these other guys that they come from somewhere outside of the information that you've been told to don't look at That's really a trick. It's like, if you told me not to look at it, then why would you put it in the Bible? Why would you make a reference to some stuff that you say is evil and I shouldn't deal with it at all, but you put it kind of in, honestly, some of it in high regard. And I'm like, of course I didn't notice it when I was a Christian wrapped into religiosity. Because I just, we just simply took what leadership told us and we didn't do 
our due diligence to go in and study what somebody Mm -hmm. so all you saying is read the bible for yourself (laughs) basically (laughs) basically is what it comes down to is simply doing something real plain and obvious and it's more and and, and read the bible for yourself yeah but read it with an an open mind if you don't have an open mind and you stuck learn how to have an open mind learn how to 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 read it with an open mind right really ask really knock and really seek and then you will truly find your answer that's when stuff start coming to you at that point it's up to you if you want to even listen or not right i i understand this too we understand this too is that our purpose is not to like <laughs> Curtis said, take a journey and open your mind for <laughs> real because I'm gonna tell you yeah. after a journey your the, the word automatically it, looks different it becomes the living word and you tap into it and it has a totally different purpose and meaning altogether after going on a journey mm-hmm. uh, Jessica said can you uh, yes. share scripture that references the other guys yes oh, gonna I, oh I'm going to do yeah, that tonight gonna do I'm, that. Definitely, we're, yeah. I'm definitely going to do that yes so Jessica yeah. yes most definitely uh, y'all just strap y'all seat belts in and get ready if you got a pen or something you can take some notes with so that you can do your referencing and asking your own questions and looking at this stuff for real to be like are the Xenos just talking out the side of their neck or does mm-hmm. this really have any type of real reference point to you know the word and 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 any and any level of importance that I should be paying attention to it and maybe it should start causing me to ask some other questions. That's right, Curtis. That's we, we are gods. Yes. There it is. We See, are gods. Look. Also, yes. And we're gonna get into that too. Oh no, he bought this life. He is he basically like he bought this life right now. He he not <laughs> playing with y'all, okay? So but we talked about uh Osiris, Isis, and Horus, if you didn't know who that was. Yeah, just do like, can you do like a quick overview? A oh, quick yeah. overview of what we talked about last time so that the people will be uh, yeah caught up. And then if you uh, want to really get like the, the scriptures and the references and all yeah. of that, then you can go back and check out the replay <laughs> right. of the last live that we did. Right, right. And so... Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we talked about um, the Essenes and the importance, um, the uh, connection that they had because they were taken out of the Bible. Uh, let me say this: there were a few people that were taken out of the Bible that we're going to talk about tonight. A couple of people, and we're going to make some references in regards to people that weren't mentioned in the Bible but still played a major role in Christianity. So they still played a major role in Christianity that. The council, I'll just say the council of men that made these decisions on what's going to make it in the Bible and not decided that we ain't even going to mention this dude over here, but he was really important back in time and made references quite ironically to just about all the books that weren't allowed in the Bible. So that's why he didn't make it probably because they was like, you too real to make it into the Bible and we got an agenda. (laughs) <laughs> so you not you not rolling with the program, bro. You not gonna make it. You too real. Yeah. Okay. Uh, into the Bible. So, but we have to use this information because we need to know where all of this stuff is coming from. Meaning, where is some of the stuff coming from that the major players in the Bible are actually saying? This is what I really wanted. We gonna get to this tonight. What did I just say? I'm gonna repeat what I just said because that was a nugget. <laughs> within itself i'm saying that the major players that did make it in the bible mm-hmm. they said certain things and some of the things that they said were influenced by things outside of the bible that came hundreds of years before them and then they came and they was like yo there's some new sauce it's almost kind of like what we doing right now a little bit it's like just a little right, bit in this part. sense I got some. We got our hands on some some information, mm-hmm. right? That taps into the ancient way. It's an old way, the yes. way that people originally did it. Yes, and they did it for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Now here we're in another timeline, another time frame, and we come in and we talking about this way longer than thousands of years. Yeah, but yeah. yes, <laughs> and we're talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. Except for we're not just walking around like yeah. We're not putting titles on what it is that we're talking about. That's the only difference, right? Yeah, we're not apostles, so-and-so. We're being about it, too, though. 
And we living this life. We though. talking about it. We and we being about, about it. it. Let me tell y'all something. Yeah, hit the link. Hit the link in my wife bio, and then you'll know what's popping. How they gonna know what's popping with the link in the bio? Man, we doing straight live exorcisms in this mug. <laughs> While people in the church be, <laughs> I'm just gonna be real. Like <laughs> we doing straight live exorcisms about this spirit life. Warn we 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 about this life and people walking around here with titles talking about give me some money and helping them with their lifestyle and we out here really handling business we rolling our sleeves up and getting out here and helping people i ain't even gonna front i ain't even gonna hold it back because half the folks that got them collars on that's walking up in there grace and peace and everybody would not be able to stand in the ceremonial space without their heart falling in their shoes or they the bottom of they dungarees or they draw somewhere because oh i'm gonna tell y'all okay it's going down so we oh talked about God. the way it is yeah. seems we, we talked talk about, about that on another live yeah what happened yeah, well, yeah we're talking about that on another so live. so so here it is just and this is then i'll get into the lesson we did talk about the way of the essenes because it's really important it's in reference to what we've just been talking about which is people that were in the Bible that were a part of the religious uh, 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 facts, right, and functionality of that time frame in that world, right? The Pharisees right. and the Sadducees had a big major role to play in praying for the Messiah to come back and they were trying to find the Messiah and they was waiting for the Messiah, they was looking for the Messiah and they was praying for the Messiah. But they weren't the only ones that was doing that, okay? And so there are other people that were doing it and now John the Baptist and guess who Jesus believe it or not had tapped into some of these groups that were not mentioned in the Bible even though the Bible may makes faint references to these other sects and some of their other practices and everything okay so we talked about the way the Essenes, Jesus, and John's relationship and how God really symbolically. Did you know that God was into symbolism? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a real question. God was into symbolism too. He just didn't do stuff. He wanted you to know. Like, So we, we going to get into this. So now, okay, so I'm just going down now into the lesson so we can really get into it. We read from the book of the Essenes actually too. Wow. And we read a part that I believe um, explains where Jesus was with a group of individuals, a group of people, pardon me, where they, it sounds like they went on an actual uh, psilocybin journey. And so the people's reaction to it was like, it's, it describes exactly how a person feels after they come up off of a journey. Yeah, we did some of the things that, that they and saw. When we we read, read it. We asked because there were some people on there that have been on a journey, and we asked <laughs> yeah. them, "Do it sound like that they had went, went on, on a, a journey, journey?" And they was like, "They was uh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah." All right. So now, so what we gonna talk about? We gonna start this now. The truth behind the Christ story. Now, the truth behind the Christ story and the ancient origin similarities right of this story within the Christian church I'm gonna repeat that because this is really important this is what this lesson is really all about and it's gonna take a few dips and turns because it's still all relative to the similarities right and this story or the truth about Christ's life and major parts of his life that when we were say when we were Christians, it's like I like the way that um, Tammy says it though. She said she uses the term that they're kingdom people. I love that because there's a differentiation between just being a Christian. You can be a Christian, and I mean, what does that mean? Like that don't mean that you actually doing anything that the Bible says, and you can be a Christian. And we see this all the time. So we're gonna talk about. Let's get into the truth behind it, meaning when there's enough information and, and information that can back up what it is that you're saying, you would probably take that as truth, right? Geographically, historically, astronomically, all, all those things taking place. All right. So um, here's a question. The question is, what is the origin 
where does the beginning of the story of Jesus, right, the Christ, actually start? The Son of God, who was born of a virgin, supposedly on December 25th. Now, that's what they taught us when we was in church. Mm -hmm. They said that Christ, his D.O.B., date of birth, <laughs> was on December the 25th. Did you just say D.O.B.? Yes, D.O.B., date of birth. <laughs> but... When you get a little bit more seasoned in the word and you start really studying, doing enough a little studying, and then you find out, okay, here's the first lie that we was told. Because Jesus wasn't actually born on the 25th. But this brings into question, right, why were we told the 25th? And then let's watch and see what happens throughout time before we get to Christ how things line up and it's going to make you ask some questions and your eyebrows touch your hairline okay <laughs> all right oh wow so now and to teach on that is a whole nother lesson within itself meaning to teach on the birth of the 25th of december and all that. that's a whole nother lesson oh no but we're gonna do that too that's what i'm saying yeah, it's a whole nother lesson too, yeah and so i'm sure you guys are familiar with his story right which states that he was born in a manger he was surrounded by shepherds and then he grew up to be one, right, with his father in heaven. And I know you guys, um, y'all can recall the sequence of events when Jesus the Christ gathered his important disciples together, mm -hmm. right, before he ended up having to endure his death. And um, he got tortured, right? They put him on a cross and crucified him. And then his resurrection, right? He came back to life and... Finally, outside of that, the scene at the end of his time on earth when he actually prophesied his return. And then he ascended into heaven. Now, um, everything that we said thus far, I'm more than sure that it might be somebody, somebody on this live that probably has mumbled underneath their voice like, yeah, they talking about Jesus got more than one story. It's <laughs> stories about Jesus stories about Jesus in his life like it's like it's more than one yeah that's what I'm saying that's what we saying we saying that there's identical stories of Jesus life and some of the same exact events that took place in his life that are extremely pivotal and important and we're gonna see back in time where some other individuals have that same life and those same events take place in their lives in a different time frame in a different region yeah before jesus before jesus yeah okay and so now here it is um let's go wait, to let me just say this real quick before you even go there yes i'm gonna keep it 100 okay <coughs> mm -hmm. so when we was learning this stuff if you knew, if y'all knew how many times I had to come and look at it and put it down and be like, uh-uh, I can't take this. I'm not reading. No, I'm yeah. done. Like, I, I don't yeah. know what to believe. I don't yeah. know what to do. Yes. Uh, my mind would be blown. Yeah. And then I would get angry. <laughs> then I would get sad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like, I just, I knew that it was more. I knew that it was more, and we had to keep going. We had to keep going. We had to keep going. Mm -hmm. And every time we kept going, the progression happened, and the things that I put down and walked away from later on, as long as I kept studying, as long as we kept studying, later on, it would come back, and we mm. would say, oh. oh, this is what they was talking about. Right. We'd be like, oh. Nah, I know he ain't talking about aliens. I know he ain't talking about no damn aliens. No, I'm done. I can't. No, yeah. I will not. Yeah. I can't uh -huh, do it. Uh -huh. No. But if you continue to ask, knock and seek, and get pat, push past the fear, because one thing my wife and I, we do understand, is that when you actually, first of all, when you dig deep down in your heart and you say that statement, or you make the quote that I feel like everybody, when they get to a point in their life and they tired of going through the same stuff, they they say this. What? I just want to know the truth. Ah, that's what I thought Ooh, you were going to say. Ooh, we. Yeah. Do you? Do you really? Let me look in the camera. <laughs> Are you really sure? 
that you really ready for the truth and want to know the truth? Are you? Because what's going to happen is the, found, the foundation of your belief system is going to be put in question or somewhat. It just has Tamika to be regathered. That's me. Who said that? Tamika. Oh. That's why you on this live. Okay. Because that's you. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, then we're going to give you something for you to be able to research you know, and give you some, point you in some direction so that you'll be able to do your own studying for yourself as well for you to get down to the bottom of this and You're go, oh, wow. Say, God and his greatness created all kinds of creatures. Okay. De Yolanda? Yeah. I'll, put your hand up here. You see my hand? Put your hand up. I'm going to give you a high five. Hey! You are so good. Because <laughs> that's real. Okay. So your now, whole world gonna be. That's right. So Nico said, "Your whole world gonna be rocked." Yeah, a we few know. Because guess what? Be rocked a few times. I gotta and say then this. You go on the journey. Yeah. Oh, then it's you in the world. Then it's just you can't. You ain't never coming back. <laughs> ain't no denying. It's no it's turning no back denying. from it. It's it is what it is after that. So um. I want to say this, yeah. Um, Sonequa knows because we walked this journey out. We we were she was like our partner in crime when it came to asking that question and then asking that question and gathering information. So there were many nights where information was forwarded and extended back and forth. It's like, bro, sis, did y'all see this? And then we like, yo, no, check this out. Did you see this? Did you did you read this? And so we here and this took years it took years for us to get to this right so i'm excited about it uh, we're excited about it all right so we are going to give you some biblical references and we get ready to whiz through so let's get started so i actually like to inform you guys i'm gonna stick to my notes because it's very important that i stick to my notes so that that way you can learn or at least have the proper information for you to dig right and do reference checks and get into some of your own studies for yourselves i would love for that to happen so that we can come back to these when we do another live and we can engage each other and really talk right and, and everybody all kind of be on the same page so now so i i would like to inform you guys that uh, many years before the birth of jesus a story identical to his was the accepted life story of a persian son of god i'm gonna repeat that Okay, I'm gonna repeat it. Wait, pause. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Tank said, speaking of creatures, why am I just now finding out Leviathan is a real Bible creature? It really is. It really is. Where do you think they get this stuff? Where yeah. do you think? Let me ask y'all this because we live in Hollywood. Hey, Victoria. Where do y'all think Hollywood get this stuff from? They just snatch it out their behinds? No. They going back into these texts. They going back into this literature that Christians are afraid of. And they making money going back into this stuff, writing about it. And then you like, this is just a fantasy. Why do y'all think hmm. Star Wars is so big? Oh, man. Why do you think Star Wars is so big? Why do you think Star Wars, Wars so has such the... Ain't gonna hold on. Go nowhere. It has an, an occult... Or cult, cult following. following. Right? Mm -hmm. Because it's based on some information from the past. Some findings of literature that was excavated out of the earth. And then George Lucas, pardon me, and his team... Right? They come in and it's like, yo, we finna get this bread because this is one of the greatest stories ever told that most people don't know about. All right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go back. Many years before the birth of Jesus, the Christ, a story identical to his, identical to his, exactly like his story, <laughs> was the accepted life story of a Persian son of God called Mithras. That's M I T H R A S. M I T H R A S. Mithras. That's a reference point for you guys to go study this, okay? And before Mithras, there was a very similar story that was ascribed to various other sons of God, okay? 
including, here it is, the Greek, Dionysus. Dionysus. That's D-I-O-N-Y-S-U-S. D-I-O-N-Y-S-U-S. Dionysus. We're going to get into it. How about the Greek god Osiris? That's O-S-I-R-I-S. -I Osiris. Osiris was an African king and a god from the nation of Kemet, which white people came and then renamed it Egypt. So this is a real, it's a real, is Egypt a real country, y'all? Mm -hmm. It's on the Africa. continent, it's on the continent of what, baby? Africa. Africa. Which is Kemet. Which is originally called Kemet. Kemet. Okay. Then we have the Sumerian god. Mm -hmm. It's called Damuzi or Tammuz. Tammuz. Now. Damuzi, D A M M U Z I, D A M M U Z I, or Tammuz, T A M M U Z, T A M M U Z. Tammuz is definitely referenced in the Bible, and we're going to go into it. Where the Bible gives major respect and, and acknowledgement, in that sense, heavy acknowledgement of the God Tammuz. So you're like, why? Because obviously Tammuz existed. If we just going off the Christian belief system that everything in the Bible is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then we have the Hindu god, Murugan. M-U-R-Y-E-G-E. U-G. That's why I said ye. U-G-A-N. <laughs> right. M-U-R-U-G-A-N. Okay. The Hindu god Marugan. Now here's the thing. Y'all. I want y'all to know this. When we got into this. I just had to cut the list off. Because I was like. Yeah. It's, it's too so many. many. <laughs> it's, it's another one that I am going to talk about. I'll just give it to you ahead of time. Uh, The name of this god is called Addis. A-T-T-I-S. Addis. And we'll get into some information about that. Okay, so if we keep going back in time, many thousands and thousands of years earlier, right, we will discover that there's a universal story of Jesus the Christ. I just said something that probably most religious Christians would probably say, the devil entered my soul, took it over, and now I'm being led by the devil because I said that. Oh, they saying that you got taken over? By making this statement. Oh. By making this statement. Okay. That, guess what? What? There's a universal story of the story of Jesus the Christ. Long before Jesus the Christ came. Now, some things, I'm just going to say this. Some things, whether written or not, are just truth. There are unwritten truths in our lives. This is just, it is it's what it truth. is, right? Yeah, it's it the is truth. What it, is. it doesn't have to be written down in a book for it to be so. Like, as a human being, if you fall hard enough on concrete, you'll probably hurt yourself and start bleeding. Now, whatever type of injury you incur is going to take you down a certain lane, and then it could prob you could probably ascribe certain terms to it in order for you to flow in a particular industry that has all of these other uh, labels and terminology that exists with it to put you in a category for you to say, oh, that's the truth. They broke their ankle, or they cracked their wrist, their skull, and this is what happened. Their back is hurting and so blah, 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 whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is that if somebody takes a serious enough fall, 
predominantly in most situations and there have been in situations where people have fell off of stories many stories of buildings fell boom bounce and hit the ground and got up and nothing happened and that, that has actually happened and that was the tr- <laughs> and that was the truth for them okay why am I saying this why is Zeno saying this because by the time we get finished with all of this information this statement that, that I just said, that it sounds like we discovered that there's a universal story of the story of Jesus the Christ, then it won't sound so abrasive and so blasphemous. That ain't blasphemous anyway. I'm just saying, blasphemous right? Blasphemous anyway. Yeah, so. okay. So now, this Jesus the Christ story is also connected with a story, or I'm not even going to call it a story. Um, who's you gonna call it? An event where people ascribed the same life story of Jesus to who they call the Green Man. Hmm. But the Green Man came way before Jesus. Mm-hmm. Again, I want you guys to understand that Christianity is probably one of the younger world religions. That probably only is about maybe two thousand plus years old. So that's why and we always they hear talk about mm-hmm. and then they want to talk, talk about, about babe. we be doing this new we they doing this new stuff. New age and then new wait a minute, I'm about to burn. <coughs> Excuse mm-hmm. me. Yes. That new age stuff or whatever, blah wow. blah blah. New and age. they don't realize how new their religion is. <laughs> right. Like we're not doing no <coughs> new age, no well, actually, it's not new it's age. Not new age. They religion age. ain't new age. It's old age. Listen, it's ancient. actually old age. Okay, what's old age? Christianity. I'm talking about what we doing is is beyond. Oh, yeah, oh, it's yeah. beyond that. That's what I'm oh, saying. They yeah. saying that we do what we doing it's is new age. age. Oh yeah, nah. and what we're not doing again. Is what we're age. doing is old age. This ain't nothing new that we doing. We just tapped into what where God led us and took us back to closer towards. You know what I'm saying? What he was showing people yeah, thousands, of thousands, yeah, 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 thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago. All right. Okay. So now the green man. The green man, which was the son of a virgin goddess who was born, then died. Watch this. He was born, died, and then finally resurrected. The difference is, is that this god, the green man, resurrected each and every year. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? Each and every year. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to go through a quick, because you asked me to do a quick timeline, right? We're going to do a quick timeline and go into the descriptions of these different people. So now. A quick timeline. Yeah, because this is, this is the lesson. It is. So now, here it is. We're going to start with the Hindu divine son. The Hindu divine son. Now, we're giving you some historical, uh, factual information, all right? So if you really want to look into it, you're gonna. Um, I'm more than sure people heard of Alexander the Great, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Alexander the Great was so famous that in our time frame they named a candy after him called Alexander the Grape. <laughs> and it was good. <laughs> I used to be a snack. And candy, it wasn't so good for you. It was no. It, it was, was not good. totally good for you at all. But it, the candy was good. And so, when the Greek conqueror, Alexander the Great, arrived in India, he was surrounded by an abundance of rituals. Now, they use the term venerated effigies. Venerated effigies just simply means highly respected statues. (laughs) Okay? Highly respected. Venerated means highly respected, and effigies just simply means statues, right? Uh, Of a divine son. So now... Alexander the Great came into India and he came into this uh, culture where everybody then had these statues and they had it high in, it held in high um, regard, right? This passion and respect for the Hindu divine son, right? The green man, or I'm sorry, Dionysus. So here it is. It says the divine son that reminded him of his beloved Dionysus. It, be- it oh. It, here it is, Alexander the Great was following after Dionysus. 
and it reminded him of Dionysus, the people that, you know, in India they were following this guy, the, the Hindu divine son. Now, these reminders were so prevalent that Alexander and his men were finally compelled to exclaim that we know your divine son. This is Alexander the Great being quoted from some writing saying this. We know your divine son. He is also ours and we call him Dionysus. Let's stop right there and put a bookmark around that. <laughs> How is it that Alexander the Great, who is not mentioned in the Bible, I don't think. I don't think I've ever heard any black pastor or preacher that I know mention Alexander the Great in the Bible. But how is it that Alexander the Great makes mention of a totally different deity? And he says that it reminds him of the deity that they worship where he comes from. Right there, giving the fact that Alexander the Great did make a mark in history. Because if we go back, the Europeans are going to say that Alexander the Great was a great man. A great conqueror and progressed his people further, right, throughout time. Therefore, him marking his name in history. Regardless of whether or not however many thousands of people he killed in order to do it. They give him that acknowledgement that in somewhere in time you should know that this actually happened. And there was a person by this name and these are the events that took place while he was living in these accounts. And so I'm taking a piece of information to give you a reference point to show you that somewhere in time where there was a man living of great stature that people respected then and even now said out of his mouth in some piece of literature that is respected somewhere else that oh he went to India and then ended up telling the people in India that oh we know your divine son he is also okay, so ours Jessica said I looked up Mithras and everything I see says <laughs> pagan mythology Okay. Okay. I'm glad that you. Who looked it up? Jessica. Jessica. Yes. Jessica, did, did I give Jessica a high? I'm no, gonna give you a high five, Jessica, because I think I gave it to Yolanda. <laughs> so I'm giving y'all high fives today, right? Yes. But let's break that down. You said it's a what? Pagan what? Uh, pagan mythology. All right. Pagan just simply means individuals that live outside of the city. They live. On, in the countryside in the village they they live in in a village somewhere outside of the city as in like indigenous people in, in like a rural area people yeah like the indigenous people right like that so <laughs> the christian the native american native americans are pagans the uh who uh what is it the, the calendar my the mayans pagan <laughs> If you go to Colombia and you people that live in a rainforest, pagan, and so on. And so, guess what? They have you thinking that pagan is evil. For all my people that are in Louisiana, if you've ever been to Louisiana, there's a part of Louisiana called Vassery, and Vassery is known as the country, even though New Orleans is the city right of Louisiana a major city you can live outside of New Orleans and live in Vashery and they live a totally different way than the people that live in New Orleans the people in Vashery are pagan because they live outside of the city that's all that means but Christianity has put a negative label on it and we have to ask other questions why is that why is it that Christianity deems the term pagan or has labeled it as evil? Hmm. Agenda. 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 Okay. Mythology. 
Mythology means that these are stories that may be or may not be true. Myth. It's a myth. You know, as a matter of fact, let me not play with it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> let me do this right now. Okay. So, the origin of the word means... <laughs> Speech, thought, word, discourse, conversation, story, saga, tale, myth. Anything delivered by mouth. A word of unknown origin. So the word myth goes back to, they can't even tie a date and a time frame to it. I would like to say that in Africa a lot of the reason why we don't hear or know about our origin here in America being even though we are African Americans is because a lot of our history was tied into myths meaning they were told by word of mouth and they weren't written down so the responsibility of that village leader or tribal leader one of their responsibilities nine times out of ten was to hold on to the previous myths being told they learn those myths and they pass them down to right the people that live in their village or are in their tribe so if you were snatched away from the tribe taken to a foreign land and then treated as a slave you would no longer hold on to the myth because you're not connected to it so a pagan myth just simply means Somebody that lived outside of the city told a damn story. They told a tale. They told a saga. They had a conversation. There was some discourse. Thoughts and words put together. That's what that means, y'all. Don't let. Here's a prime example of why you need to get God for yourself. If you're a Christian and you say you believe God and you say you're a follower, start studying on mm -hmm. that level. And the trip I think is a lot of this stuff was written down. It mm -hmm. was written down before papers. Mm -hmm. It was written down before paper. It was written down. It was yeah. drawn inside of caves. It was written down inside of, of pyramids. It was on stone and rock and, and, and clay, right? This stuff was written down. Mm. Am I lying? Or am I telling the truth? Oh, no. It, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Again, like at the end of the day. Now, we still here with Alexander the Great, and he didn't tell the people in India that we know about y'all God. We know. We know him also. And he reminds us of Dionysus. Our Dionysus, it sounds like to me. That's what Alexander the Great said. In fact, the Hindu divine son, that story was so close to Dionysus that a story arose that the Greek son had himself Dionysus himself had either been born in India or spent much of his early upbringing there before going to Greece why am I pulling this up y'all and you probably like what does this have to do with the Bible it has everything to do with the Bible because this story Jesus story we don't have all of it in the Bible 18 years of Jesus' life is missing and Christians all over the world, two, I think it's like two billion of them all over the world, they ain't even batting the eye at the fact that Jesus Christ, 18 years of his life ain't even in the Bible and they just taking it like, yep. So we shouldn't ask questions. That's what we taught when you go to catechism and Bible study and Bible school and then you start asking these questions about, well, what the hell happened to Jesus when he was, you know, he wasn't there. That's more than half of his life, literally not in the Bible. Like, literally. Like, think about it. Hmm. 18 years. That's, so what's that like? That would mean that if 18 years wasn't in the Bible, then that means... That's a whole adulthood. Like, come on now. Like, are you really about to base your whole <laughs> life on... Somebody that they only knew 16, 15, 15 years, 15 years of his life. So his more life. than half of his life is missing out of the Bible. 
You have more than, children. You have children that's damn thirty and twenty five, and you be like, if you don't go and sit down somewhere, mm-hmm. trying to think you telling me. I know what it is. Mm-hmm. Y'all know how y'all parents be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all need to be finding out how did he develop? What developed him in those wow. 18 years? Wow, we. And he bust up. And, and when and he came, came back, he come that's back when like he had all that power. That's when he was doing the miracles, y'all. Okay. Why wouldn't y'all want to know about that? So now here it is. We making a reference and and the similarity between Jesus's life is missing now. So here, Alexander the Great instant came, popped up a story. It's like, yo, like Dionysus' story arose in the, the Greek son where basically he possibly could have been born in India or spent time in India before he came to Greece and then they knew him as Dionysus, the Greek god. Right? Mm-hmm. So now a, t- a town named Nisa, N-Y-S-S-A. Nisa. Which is the same name as Dionysus' birth town in the West was a little bit later discovered in India. How about that? And the divine is this, is this what we went over last time, or no. is this is new? This is new, right? This is all new. Okay, I thought so. Mm-hmm. And so, um, later, his birth town was discovered in India. We talking about Dionysus. And the divine son of the Greeks and Hindus, it became synonymous. In other words, they were connected now. The name Dionysus denotes the god of Nisa, which is the god of that city. Similar to his counterpart, the forever young and effeminate, yes, I said it, effeminate Dionysus. The Hindu's divine son was the prepubescent Murugan. Murugan. See, here's another thing, y'all. I'm going to explain this whole effeminate thing with uh, Dionysus. Similar to Dionysus. The Hindu's divine son, Murugan, which means the beautiful. So, wait, I got to pause you. Mm-hmm. So. You're saying that this Dionysus mm-hmm. is from uh, India, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Hinduism. Yes. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, the fact about Hinduism is mm-hmm. Hinduism is the oldest religion. Mm-hmm. Oldest. Well, let's just put it like this: religion. Right, because if we go back to we always gotta, I always gotta do this for all my people that get mad and upset about us tapping into our heritage, <laughs> black folks. Yeah, I gotta say it. The first belief system that was ever displayed on the planet was animism, and animism just simply means that the spirit, right? The spirit was able to be projected and emanate from any and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's just what it was. So like when, when you have a pet. Can I put my leg on you? Yes. When you purchase a pet, like a dog or a cat or whatever, that pet has a particular spirit. It has a personality with it. Some pets, you can talk to them and teach them and they do human things because of the spirit. It's animus. Animus. It's a projection of the spirit or God. God's spirit, right, emanating from this particular creature or object. So that was the first belief system that was really walked into, which created this uh, polytheistic viewpoint and stance on religion. So if people get offended, but again, and go, this is evil because it's more than one God they're worshiping. They worshiping all of these different gods. Well, I said in the last live that Christianity moves in a polytheistic way too. We just, what they did was they pulled a wool over our eyes. That's all. 
it's probably somebody mumbling right now underneath their voice again. And they're going, blasphemy. <laughs> How would he say that Christianity is about more than one God? We talking about the one and true living God. I know. But that's not what we were taught in catechism and in Bible school and in Bible study. We were taught that and we were also taught that God is more than one. God is plural in the form of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's multiple. That's more than one. That's poly, 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 poly. That's what it is. Like, calm down. If you're offended, calm down. We just need you to study. We just need you to get to the root word meaning of these words and not get so reared up. Let's use some common sense and some practicality and some intelligence that God has given us and move and flow in that, right? So now. There are other names. Oh, well, I said I was going to explain this whole effeminate thing that goes on with some of the uh, the deities, right? The reason why some of these deities look like male and female together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Shiva is one. I think Krishna is another mm -hmm. one. They kind of have like this vibe where it's like it's a handsome dude, but the features are like long hair and it looks like a female too. Or a dude a male, yeah. is because that was really a reflection of the duality, right, of a human being. That we have uh, X chromosomes and Y chromosomes. We all have male and female chromosomes. And In us. So we are all made up of male and female Right, emotions and, and, and everything in us. It's yeah, in us, feminine masculine and feminine. And feminine. It, it's inside of us. So a lot of the deities that um, were uh, portrayed and projected, right, especially in art, then were projected in that way. And so people are like, man, you know, they get confused. Like, why do it look like it's a man or a female? I don't even know. That's weird. It, it has a meaning. These things definitely are tied to a meaning and a belief system which, break, which breaks down to really close to the truth. Now, here's the truth. Do we have male and female in us? X chromosomes and Y chromosomes? Yes. yes. And if, it, if there's an imbalance, then a female can begin to grow hair on her face and everything else. Voice change and deepen like a man and vice versa. A man's chest can then grow, look like breasts, like emotionally right yep. be off whack the point is to balance have balance have balance okay all right so lesson that was a lesson for that that was a lesson mm -hmm. did y'all get that i know y'all got that that okay. was good so now <laughs> yeah so now his other names included sanat kumara or kartikya a title denoted for watch this son of the pleiades mm why did you say, hmm? Because what, what does that mean for you? Uh, star system. Right. The is the star system. Not so, mm. Sun stars. Okay, so then, mm. so then now. And Pleiades is also in the Bible. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And I believe, <laughs> and I believe that God. And God is talking about Pleiades mm -hmm. in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Let, you know what? Let's just do this real quick. <laughs> Let's just go real quick because normally I wouldn't. But let's just go there. Son of Pleiades. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go there real quick, right? Pleiades. Okay. And then we're going to get to the next stuff, too, because Dionysus. Yeah. we talking about Dionysus too long. I'm ready to get to some. Oh, my gosh. You're not going to rush this. I'm ready this. to get to some better stuff. <laughs> you're not going to rush this, ma'am. No, you're not. <laughs> No, you ain't, dude. No. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Telling y'all, we want to get to some more uh, okay. stories. This so if you go to just, that's okay, because guess what? What I'm giving y'all is some real rich substance that I'm giving y'all. This is why I'm breaking it down the way that I'm breaking it down. So Pleiades, if you go to Job, chapter 38 and verse 31. Job. Not job. It sounds like something Trump would say. Job 3831. Job 3831. 
this is where Job is complaining about life. He's the first dude that actually complains to God about life. And God shows up with an attitude. <laughs> he show up. <laughs> he show up as a whirlwind, right? Like as a tornado, a whirlwind. Like basically he checked the hell out of Job. Thank like you, dude. Zaniqua. He asking Job all these questions. Was you there when this happened, Job? Was you there when you did when I did this? Was you there? Can you tell me the answer to this, 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 and that? And then in verse 31 it says, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Orion is another star cluster. Mm -hmm. So now... And the answer was no, Job couldn't, because he wasn't no astrologer. He couldn't read the stars. Now, if God would have knew he could read the stars, then he wouldn't have asked that question. But he wasn't there if he could read them anyway, so he still wouldn't have been able to answer it. No, but he would have knew what it was. He would have knew what it was, but he couldn't lose Orion's belt. Mm -mm. I know that. No. Okay, so here it is. Why are, why are we bringing up star systems? And deities, because the Bible makes references to this. But yet, Christians say, don't read the stars. Don't you get into that zodiac stuff. Okay? Don't you start looking at no astrology and astronomy and all of that, because that's of the devil. Mm -hmm. Stay away from that. But there are deities where people have tied them to star systems and star clusters the gods that reign and rule over this because they know it have it has meaning major meaning and it impacts the influence of mankind like the moon and the tide of the ocean okay so now here it is both the greek dionysus and the hindu god Murugan were intimately associated watch this with the seven sisters if you ever heard this the term the seven sisters then you'll know that that's dealing with the stars hmm who during their infancy manifested physically as their nursemaids and like Dionysus Marugan had been born from the earth mother the Hindu Shakti We've heard of that if you ever went to yoga. Then they would do a chant that has the word Shakti in it, meaning energy. That's all Shakti. Chakras, your energy, Shakti, <laughs> Chakra, right? Yeah, that would be in uh, Kundalini. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, Kundalini yoga. The Asians call it something else. They call it Chi. So Shakti or Chi. Chi. Mm -hmm. Right? Energy. Energy. Okay, so through mating with the invisible father in heaven. So this is what happened that created Marugan, right? The Hindu sun god. All the earth mother mating with the invisible father in, in heaven, heaven, Shiva. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So both Dionysus and Marugan became monarchs of the earth. But they were also recognized as the greatest of warriors who carried out and fought with versions of other favorite weapon, like the spear. Dionysus carried a, a thrice spear and Marugan met his opponents on the battlefield with his veil spear. Do, are you seeing the similarities is all I'm really trying to bring up. Okay? okay. These similarities in the ways that they moved as a warrior. They both were warriors and they both carried spears. The Greek God carried a spear, some type of spear, and the Hindu God carried a different type of spear. But symbolically, the similarities are there because the myth or the story, the origin of it is still being told the same way. Different regions. Different regions. Okay? All right. So now, let's go to another one. The solar heritage of Mithra. While Alexander and his men were linking with Dionysus, right, and Marugan, the counterpart of these two divine sons was being uh, revered in both India and then Persia. This was the Christ son Mithra. So, so while at the same time, Marugan 
and Dionysus was being worshipped, Mithra pops up. Hmm. And the name Mithra demotes, watch this, friendships, contracts, meditation, and balance. Now, we can go deep into that, but I'll just scratch the surface. The surface is when we talk about resurrection and we talk about, let's just talk about mortality. Most people don't even want to talk about mortality. I'm in the life insurance business. People don't want to talk about life insurance because they think it's about death and it's really more about life than it is about death. So now, <laughs> so now when we talk about contracts and meditation and balance, then we can um, attach that to the spirit realm to where as it connects to our mortality, right? Well, then the Bible says that Jesus came back and he resurrected. As a matter of fact, he came back multiple times and he wasn't the only one that came back. There were other people in nearby graves that came back when he actually came back. And they went and seen their loved ones, too. Yeah, and we talked about that on a previous live, too. It's in the Bible, KJV. It's in the Bible, okay? So now, would it be far-fetched? Because we're still talking about the similarities and the stories of this Christ, right? Son of God story. Jesus. Okay, well then, if you leave this earth, well then, we know, according to the Bible, that you're able to come back. But now, here, it says something about contracts. So is it, is it really wild and off-grid to say that if a person, not even, I'm not, I won't even go there. Before coming here, not after leaving and coming back. Yes, before coming here. But before here. coming here, did we have a contract with each and every individual that we ever meet in the world? The parents, did we choose the parents that we came through? Like, if you don't dare to ask that question now, but you've already asked yourself, I want to know the truth. Save this live <laughs> because you're going to end up coming back to this question that I just asked. So does that mean that at some point maybe we had contracts with the vessel that we came through to get to this realm? And certain people in our lives that are there that seem closer to us than our blood relatives? Did we sign some contracts with those kind of people too maybe? Woo, man, I'm going to take a sip on that because it's kind of deep. What's, where are the comments at? Can we see some comments? Ain't no comments. Ain't no what was, but ain't no more now. Okay. So, you right now, you just, you teaching. Okay. So now, here it is. Mithra was a product of the universal polarity. That's what we were talking about. That uh, pre-pubescent and feminine okay, so kind of look. Comment. Yolanda said, or we were those people in former lives. Hmm. 100. She went there. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you won. <laughs> okay. So now, Mithra's mother was of the earth, and his solar father in heaven was known by the name of Ahura Mazda. Watch this, y'all. Oh, I'm like, why you say it like that? Okay, I'm finna tell you. Where do you think the vehicle's name came from when they came up with the vehicle? Mazda. Mazda. Ooh. If y'all knew where these large <laughs> billion dollar companies... Here's another one. Hold on. If you actually happen to, to own a Subaru, then I want you to pay attention to the logo on your car because it looks like a star system. Mm -hmm. Subaru. <laughs> mm. They put the stuff in our face. They put it in our face, y'all. And if you're not studied, then you'll be like, oh, I don't even know what that means. Listen, um, who was it? Was it... I think it was PJ Morgan mm -hmm. Chase. 
Okay. Like mm-hmm. one of the originator mm-hmm. was like uh Tell about my man from Chase Bank. Yeah. The the mm-hmm. real dude from Chase Ch- the Chase. Yeah. Okay. Uh billionaires read billionaires read the stars. They they know about the stars and that billionaires billionaires billionaires, r- billionaires yeah. are going to if they don't read them they're going to hire someone that reads them read, yes. because they know that the stars has influence on mankind. So, peep this. If you can know exactly by the month of December the mood on the planet in which people are going to move in and their energy, people are going to be confused. There's going to be a lot of anger and, and, and despair. People are going to move in fear. Well, then you might be able to take advantage of that in the stock market, maybe, to be able to know when the stock is getting ready to go down. Listen, let me say this. Mm. The past, present, and the future is all written in the stars. (sighs) It's all written in the stars. Okay. So Mithra was eventually taken to the West by the Persians and then became known as Mithras. M-I-T-H-R-A-S. The beloved monarch warrior general of the Roman legions. Did you hear that? So now there's another pattern that we mentioned before in the last live about our European brothers. That they have a tendency to take things. Yolanda said this so good. Thank you. Thank you. So they have a tendency to take things and make them their know, own. Let us know if y'all feel like it's getting boring too. Because she the only I'm one say, that's, that's... I'm going to say keep it 100. <laughs> yeah, please. If you feel like it's getting boring, then say, come on y'all. Yes, it's getting boring. please. Say that. By all means. Because... <clears throat> And then I'll just the switch up my. I'll the switch up my. The truth. I'll switch up my whole situation. I I'm not saying I it's boring now because it's not. But, yeah, but hey, you know, it did get boring at one time for me. For her, yeah. that's it. But, that's that's her, but look, I'm just keeping the word. That's how. See, the word truth is so subjective because for her, that's her truth, and for somebody else, it's not. That's right. But you know what? You got to be your true authentic self. Yeah. And in order to be free, and guess what? With Auth- no mask. And authenticity is d- is actually deemed by the person themselves. Mm-hmm. What's true and what's fake? What's real and what's fake? That's so right. it's still subjective. Right. All right. So now here it is. Mithra was taken to the west now by the Persians, and then became Mithras. And he was the beloved monarch warrior general of the Roman legions. Mithra and Mithras became identified as a spirit embodied by the many Roman emperors who sat upon the throne of the world while proclaiming themselves to be its universal king. By another name, watch this, Mithras was called Sol Invictus. Hmm. Now, there's a company. I'm going to look it up real quick. They make timepieces. Mm-hmm. It's a very popular brand, Invictus. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to show you right here what some of these watches look like. Invictus. Yes. Invicta, just singular. Why would a company make a luxury brand out of or name it Invicta? Because they're giving reference to something. There's a poem called Invictus 2. Okay. Yes, there probably is a. a a, a poem called Invictus because everything that we're talking about is relative to the story of Jesus because Jesus is a deity, is a God. And whether or not people realize it is also attached to astrology and astronomy because Jesus is the sun. The sun, I want y'all to hear this. The sun, the S O N and the S U N, the son of God. Because 
historically this is how deities were proclaimed they had rule over the heavens and the earth otherwise Jesus would not be in the same league if he did not have the attachment of a celestial body or him ruling over the heavens Jesus wouldn't even be in a conversation you better teach okay oh my gosh all right <laughs> <laughs> okay so now soul invictus is synonymous with the solar father in heaven how about that so it makes sense for someone to come up with a luxury brand that's able to keep time how do we keep time through the stars otherwise we wouldn't have a calendar mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so in order to honor his beloved Mithras the Emperor Charlemagne here's another famous human being in historical time and and look and Charlemagne the guy right on the breakfast, oh, the club, breakfast club called himself that I don't even know if he really the knew guy. who Charlemagne the I guy was he knew. <laughs> but Charlemagne was an emperor and he chose his day of Sunday the day of the sun to be the holiest day of the week that's where Christian churches got their day to worship on before Christianity. Before Christianity. I'm going to repeat it. I have to repeat it. They had got it from Mithras. So, no, they got it from... They got it from the Emperor Charlemagne. But back who, in yeah, who actually, yeah, yeah, served Solar Invictus. Yes. Who was really based off of Mithras. Yes. Wow. Yeah chose his day of Sunday, the day of the sun, to be the most holiest day of the week. All right. Now, Jesus, the incarnation, watch this y'all, of the green man. What are you saying? Are you saying Jesus is actually the green man? Well, well, well. Do you see what I just did? What had happened was Take another breath. I'm gonna put y'all in on a little secret. Whenever, whenever I do that, it's just a reminder of the gratefulness that I have for life because oh, I, I take a breath. About, I thought you was about to say when I do that, that means I'm about to hit y'all with the bang boogie. I didn't already hit y'all with what the I bang did? boogie, nigga. <laughs> I didn't already hit y'all with it. That's what I thought you were about to say. I can shut down right now. Uh, no, no, you can't. I'm just saying. Because we got to get to some, so now, some G more good stuff. You was about to say some good stuff. She just she a hater, y'all. She don't be wanting to go through all no. the, Let me tell you what this is a reflection of. I'm glad that you said that, though, and I love you dearly. But this is the reflection of how we used to move as Christians. And some of the most important parts in the Bible, we don't even dare cling to. What am I saying? So and so begot so and so, mm -hmm. and so and so begot so and so, and had three sons named so and so, so and so, and so and so. And I would be lost with the tither, hither, mither. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, thou, this or that, and I'd be like, I don't know what they talking about. But it is in the begot. The begot this person begot that person that had these many sons and daughters that begot this person and that person which is the true source of tapping you back into where the hell this philosophy came from where this idea came from where this practice came from where this tradition came from so Nick would say absolutely Z Yolanda said Chronicles yes oh man Yolanda yeah, even like the Chronicles of Narnia, like all that. I like, see you, like Yolanda. The, the movies, the Chronicles <laughs> of Narnia, and uh, uh, yeah, all okay. that stuff. Is, yeah. So now it's time to draw and and focus in onto the story of Jesus. Reading Chronicles, mm -hmm. <laughs> who 
is believed all across the world to be the Christian Son of God, for the most part, right? Who remains today one of the last incarnations of the ancient green man. Did I just say that? I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. Who remains today as one of the last incarnations of the ancient green man. And who was that? Jesus, mm. the Son of God. Now his Christ. rise to fame began at the height. It began at the height of Mithras' popularity. How about that? When a future Roman soldier named Saul, who was born in Tarsus, of uh, what is this Cilicia? Now I'm finna tap y'all in on some stuff. I'm using one of the main characters that. The council of men decided to say, oh, we want to have not his scriptures, but his letters put in the Bible. Mm -hmm. These were simply letters that he wrote to the church. These weren't like scriptures like, oh, and God sat down. He's like, oh, yeah, let me write down what God is just saying to whoever God's going to deliver this to. And I'm going to bury it in the earth and then people will find it. They decided to allow Saul, who then turns into Paul, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, here it is. The height of Mithra's popularity is the same time when Jesus, the story of Jesus, is hitting. When a future Roman soldier named Saul was born in Tarsus of Cilicia. That's going to be in Acts chapter 9 verse 11. I need y'all to just take that in so you'll know I'm not just coming up with stuff. He was born in Tarsus. Now, here's the thing. The information that I just mentioned Can before giving the Acts chapter nine verse what, Acts 11? chapter nine verse eleven. What I want y'all to understand is, is that when you start digging outside of the Bible, then you'll start getting references to the Bible when you get information like this. Oh, there was a future Roman soldier named Saul who was born in Tarsus of Cilicia. Then if you go in and you go Tarsus of Cilicia and then you put in KJV or of the Bible KJV Tarsus KJV if you outside of the Bible and you want to know if there's a reference inside of the Bible just put whatever it is you're thinking about and attach KJV to it now I'm giving you all some tools on how to study more hmm in the information age. Acts chapter 9 verse 11 says, And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Now, let's go to did, did that clear that up for y'all? That was a reference of where Paul, where he was. He was actually born there. That was where he was born. He grew up in Tarsus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says it here in Acts chapter 9 and 11. We just read it. Go further down in Acts 2 chapter 21. Acts chapter 21 verse 39. <clears throat> and now... If that's not good enough for you, before I really go into this other information, I'm just showing you how outside information can be then given reference to and attached to the very thing they say, if it ain't in the Bible, then you better not, sh don't even say it. Well, there's other information outside of the Bible that give it gives reference to. To the Bible in it. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody Tomas, if it ain't in the Bible. I know. Because I know. that's one book and I just keep saying that this earth is billions of years old. Oh, and it's going to be contained in one book? It, yeah, no. it's not going to be contained in one book. No, nah, you can't even hold really all the telephone numbers that you write down in one book. Stop playing. Okay, that's oh, all I'm saying. They had to come up with the internet. So anyway, 
Acts chapter 21, verse damn, 39. Remember the damn yellow pages? Mm-hmm. You remember the yellow pages? And the, the white, white pages? pages? Wow. The Bible wasn't even that thick. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Come on, man. Come on now. Wow. That's just uh, in your yeah. city, in your state. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> so now here Think it about is. It like that. Mm-hmm. So here it is. <clears throat> Acts chapter 21, verse 39. I'm really going somewhere with this, y'all. So I want y'all to follow me if you can handle it. Paul, this is Paul talking, but Paul said, verse 39 in Acts chapter 21, but Paul said, I am a man (laughs) which am a Jew of where? Tarsus, a city in what? Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. Paul is saying this himself, giving reference to where he is and where he's from. So you mean to tell me that the point that I'm making is that is it possible for other information to actually be true and accurate and be on point and not be in the Bible? Right. There you have it. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. This is what Paul said, who was actually Saul before he turned into Paul. Okay. So now here it is. Saul was born in Tarsus, right, of uh, Cilicia, where the great place and institution of Mithras worship, where they strongly upheld and defended the principles and activities of the belief system in the Middle East. Now, I want y'all to understand this. What I just said is key and very uh, foundational in regards to how Saul moves how he thinks and what he believes in. Watch this. He was born and was raised in a city that Mithra's institution worship following and belief system was very, very strong. And people defended that where he grew up. Mm-hmm. So we not even finna say that Mithras and the idea of him knowing about Mithra he was clueless and didn't know about Mithra. Right. He grew up with Mithra. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now here it is now from a young age. Connecting the dots. Mm-hmm. Going back to Mithra, Mithras, and, yes. and how far it go back, and mm-hmm. how it's connected to people that uh, we see and that we're familiar with in the Bible. Now, so that you can see that connection. Watch this. It's here. It is for the third time. Somebody's mumbling under. Beneath their voice and they're saying he reaching he reaching for straws <laughs> he's reaching for straws it I don't even see that okay well from a young age Saul or Paul was indoctrinated into the mysteries of Mithras by who the Roman soldiers who believed in soul invictus which was really who? Mithras. Whom he daily served as their tent maker. So Saul grew up making tents for the Roman soldiers. And during that time, the Roman soldiers believed very strongly in Soul of Victus, which was really Mithras. <laughs> While growing up in Tarsus, Paul learned. It's getting good. It's getting good. Paul learned from these soldiers that Mithras had been born in a manger Mm. to a virgin on guess when? What date do you think? I'll wait. Can I say it? Can I say it? Can I say it? (laughs) Yeah. What date? December. Ooh, similar. And that Mithra and or Soul Invictus was surrounded by shepherds during the, his birth. He learned that Mithras was one with Ahura Mazda. He was one with the father god, mm. Ahura Mazda. Mm. The father in heaven and had arrived on earth to do his father's work. Who does that sound like? Mm. 
Who it sound like? Put it in the comments, y'all. Don't be acting like y'all, y'all ain't here. Y'all on. don't know what's going on. Who is he talking about? Right. Who he talking about? Who sound like? So if you just caught up with this live, that's right. That's right. If you just caught up with history it, history repeats itself. There's here's another scripture. There's nothing new underneath the sun. <laughs> <laughs> The Bible be telling us, and we just be taking what we want to take out of it. Ahura Mazda, right, is the god of Zoroastrianism. Remember, it was taken, right, from its origin, and who took it away? The Jesus Persians. Of Nazareth. From ancient like Persia. Here it is. Here's another renaming. Persia is now called Iran. So, if you ever go to Iran, and they have probably have flight bonuses if you're just checking on some vacation stuff, and you see some some people dressed up, you know what I mean? Y'all remember, remember 300, right? Y'all remember 300, oh and then y'all remember yes. uh, the, Persian, uh, the Persian god of, uh, of, of, of Persia, what was his name? Xerxes? Xerxes. Y'all remember Xerxes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that okay. was a god. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah. Like, Where do you think they get it from? Do you think remember, they just somebody came? Remember the soldiers had to climb up the mountain to uh to, to talk to the to oracle consult the with, oracle with the oracle. Uh, <laughs> and the oracle was a seer and someone who just actually walked into the knowing of things. Yes, because they were in the spirit world. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and so now you go tap into the oracle and you can receive answers for your life for the future for the future yeah wow. okay okay she was able to tell them the future okay that they all was about to get up out of there okay yeah <laughs> okay so now ahura mazda right yes was the one true god the bringer of light and darkness this was the original stance right and philosophy of that guy people revered Ahura Mazda for this Ahura Mazda was a one true God the bringer of both light and darkness and Ahura Mazda had listen various personified aspects and darkness and evil was personified as Angra Mainu why am I saying this? Is because even though Ahura Mazda, Dionysus, Mithras, Mithra, and we can go on and on, the green man, Jesus, they still all come from a more founded belief system, which I said was animus. And that animus belief system just simply meant that now Spirit emanates from any and everything which could create multiple gods. You know what? I can't wait to come on. I don't mean to cut, change the subject. Mm -hmm. You gonna remember where you at? I can't yes. wait to come on here and so we can teach y'all about the the different like root races and 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 how we started as spirit oh, and then how we progressed from, from and transformed and transformed to what we are now oh, and what man. we will become in the mm -hmm. future too mm -hmm. like i'm just it's the, it's, excited it is about real all of that we're going to be breaking down all these different signs and symbols we're going to talk about how uh how people in the bible <coughs> actually worship the the sun i mean worship the sun and then how people in the bible actually worship the moon right uh <laughs> some went with the solar <laughs> calendar Belief system and yeah. some mm -hmm. went with the lunar right Cali you got people yeah. like moses Ooh. 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 moses was what they following was, after the they worship the moon mm. They went and followed the, the lunar. We're going to be going. We're going to be talking about all. I mean, change stuff like that. But, just, my but, mind is just yeah. going. Because we're going to be talking about You just stuff, hit them with some stuff. I Did know, you right? just say I what just, you said out of your yeah, mouth? That yeah. Moses worshipped the moon? Yeah, they okay. did. Okay, all right. And so we're gonna we going to show y'all that too. But yeah. Yeah, that's that's later down the road. We're going to show yeah. you. Not too far, but we're going to. Yeah, we're going to get there. And we can say that's good, Z. Oh, okay. Thank you. You yep. back, Yolanda? Okay. I'm glad you back. All right, so now. Let's get into So it. here it is, Saul, or Paul was also informed that after a prolonged battle, right? This is a Mithra, right? After a prolonged battle with Adoramon, which was the evil one, 
I always got to have a villain. Aruman, the evil one, Mithras gathered, watch this together, 12 devotees. And these 12 devotees had to endure a last supper during which a communion of wine and bread representing Mithra's blood and body where it was consumed by all those who were present, the 12 devotees. What does that sound like? Mm. The Last Supper of Jesus the Christ. Mithras came before did, did we say that Mithras came before Jesus? Yes. Okay. Just to make that clear. Mithras, after that, after that Last Supper, then he soon dies after that event. And then he arose from the dead. Watch this. Three days later. Mm. Then, while preparing for his ascension, Mithras prophesied his return at the end of time. Or what they would call the last days for one last battle against Ariman, mm. the evil one, Armageddon, Araman, Araman, Armageddon. Mm. Y'all better come on and, and listen. <laughs> And All right. what's going on, y'all. So when Paul was old enough, he was sent to Jerusalem with the other Roman soldiers to guard some of the Jewish temples in the city. According, now where am I getting this information from? Since y'all, because I'm more than sure still somebody mumbling like he's really reaching. According to the, watch this, Christian historian, a person who lived in real time. Epiphanius Epiphanius mm, that's, that's his name <laughs> Who was Epiphanius? Epiphanius E-P-I-P-H-A-N-I-U-S I'm going to repeat it So you can do the studying yourself Let me type the name Okay Epiphanius mm -hmm. E-P-I-P-H-A-N-I-U-S Epiphanius. Epiphanius, around the year 315, he lived around 315 to the year 402 or 403. He was born in Palestine during that time. Now, it says that he lived in Egypt and during his teenage years where he received monastic training and education. What is monastic training? Because I'm not just going to go blow over words for you to not know, right? And to try to sound like I'm extra smart. No, we all going to be on the same page and you all going to know what's going on. <laughs> Monastic training just simply means it's, it's a religious way of life in which one renounces worldly pursuits to devote oneself fully to spiritual work. So now, here it is. Epiphanius was trained in training people on how to renounce worldly pursuits and become like monks and live in a monastery. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he got an epiphany. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. He became Bishop of Cyprus, which they call Salamis back in that day. And he held the position until his death. So he became a Bishop of around the year 366 or so and he held it until he died okay around 402 or 403 now Paul I want y'all to understand this Paul was um, not a Jew when he arrived after a while in Jerusalem he wasn't a Jew then but he converted to the Jew faith after falling in love with a daughter of a Jewish priest Seeking her hand in marriage. Oh my gosh. What? What you curtain for? Okay. Because here's what Hollywood would like for you to believe. Here's what the movies would like for you to believe. Here's what the Roman Catholic Church would like for you to believe. Here's what religion would like for you to believe. 
that when you go into uh, the Christian, the traditional Christian religion, especially as a priest, um, a priest that now is over a parish, that you're not supposed to get married. Oh, yeah. In the movies, it's like you take an oath and a vow of celibacy to live the rest of your life out as a worker of God. Mm -hmm. So shall the nuns do the same. Everybody is not having no sex. And then we wonder why all the little boys are being touched within the Roman Catholic Church. And the nuns are popping up pregnant. Because guess what? Privately, they have their own laws, rules, and systems. I'm going to repeat that. The Roman Catholic Church has its own law. And part of those laws addresses and deals with priests that are married. And now, why are you saying there has to be a law addressing that? Because the possibility of divorce can take place in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And so now, there's laws that were created by those in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. The head of the Christian Church. That now they say, oh, okay, well then if you're married and then you get a divorce, then this is how this is going to be split. This is, a, you know, how are we going to, are you even able to file for a divorce? Because unless you have evidence showing this and that, you, you're going to get sat down. You're going to get sat down. You're not going to be able to lead your parish. You ain't going to be able to preach nothing. And you're going to have to check in with the bishop, bro. And then sit somebody down in a minute for getting pregnant. And okay. sit somebody down in a minute for, uh... Yes. In the divorce or something. So now watch this, because I'm coming with outside information that makes references to the Bible, y'all, for y'all to have a better understanding of where these ideologies come from and why is it that the people that got accepted in the Bible were able to say things and why did they say it? Where did it come from? And we got to get to the scripture about the many guys, too. So that, oh, yeah, uh, that's coming. It's coming. So that what? So that uh, they can know? answer that question. That what was, was the earlier. question? What was the question? Where is it at in the Bible where it talks about many gods? Remember that question from earlier? Uh, okay, so let me just jump to it real quick. Oh, are you going to go there now? Let me just jump to it. This ain't hard. I actually could almost say it by memory, but I just want to make sure that I know what book it's in. We all should know what book it's in. If you go to Genesis, we're going to tell you right there. Okay? Yeah, even though it's in multiple places. It's in multiple places, in but multiple the places. main place where I'm going to start, let's just do this because it's going to be scrolling all that way. Let's just do it like oh, this. Oh, yeah, that's much easier. Yeah. So oh, let's see. Was, we was going to get to that tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, you was going to be some skipping and dipping, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> A whole lot of skipping and dipping. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. Let's see. I think this is it. Here, 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 here. Yeah. I want to go to it. I want to make sure I get y'all what y'all supposed to get as far as that. Somebody probably already pulled it up, but I want to make sure. talk about man oh my gosh. Gosh. We're going to see so these notes we going to so much stuff it's not even fun it's not even funny oh oh yeah it's before we talked about this on the live okay so let this, me just do we? this let me just go to it. but we talked about the live about this before i know this, right yeah uh So the question was, was it more God being more than one God? Let me get you or that. acknowledging Let me get a different the exact God? exact question because I want to mm -hmm. make sure. Uh, oh, is it even going to let me go up that far? 
re-ask the question then. We want to make sure. Okay. If you're still here okay. and you re-ask the question. Here, re-ask the question. I know yeah. it was something to the effect of can you show where in the Bible where it this talks says, about where, you know, it being uh, more multiple than one God. gods. Yes. Multiple gods. Okay. Yes. Okay. Something to that effect. Right, okay. y'all? Okay. So you can say, is this Psalm 82? Psalm 82. Let's go to it. Let's go to Psalm 82. Is there any particular verse within it? Because it's only eight verses. So God standeth in the congregation of the mighty He judges among the gods Among the gods That's one Well among the gods simply acknowledges That there are other gods Not that God is multiple gods Right The one true living God in Christianity I said There is a showing In the Bible of it saying That it is multiple gods Okay, let me just get to it and go and this way. Also, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Yeah, but you're right. Ye are gods, meaning because if there's more than one person, which of course there are more than one person on the earth, right? But I which think, would make it plural. I think that's one thing that answers the question, though, as far as what she was talking about, because she yeah. really was trying to find out where in the Bible it was saying that it's. It's more than one God. Like okay, so even where it says uh, in the the Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, no other gods no. before me. Like that right there alone says that there's other gods too. Okay, so let us create man in our image. Let's go there. Genesis chapter one, flat out. Genesis chapter one. It's actually verse 26 uh, where you'll really be able to see this. Now, here's the thing about it. You got to do some studying. And this is why it's important to go through different translations. (laughs) The word God in the Bible that we were given, the KJV Mm -hmm. version, is just that. Because remember... I said that all religion started from the belief system of the animus belief system. Meaning that spirit could emanate from many different creatures, things, right? And objects. Which now created a polytheistic form and view of religion. Meaning mm-hmm. more than one God. You're saying God is all. God is everything. God is in everything. Right. And right. in not just being one particular thing. Mm-hmm. But now here comes Christianity at some point. And Christianity says we need you to believe that there's one true living God. Well earlier in this live I said that there were some other guys that were deemed as the one true God that brought down what? Light and darkness. However, they still exuded and displayed different parts of their their deity, their their godness, in polarity, right? Different different aspects of man. So the anger or evil side of a person was also deified from the God, making it a multiple God multiple gods Christianity has the same thing so in Genesis 1 verse 26 let's break it down and God said let us make man in our image let us now this is the Bible's way of saying that God is more than one God 
because God just said, and God said, let us make man in our image. But if you go to the Hebrew translation of the word God, then it's going to say, and Elohim said, let us. Elohim simply means God in plural. the plural. So Elohim there's many people, gods. Yeah, people say, oh. Elohim, Elohim is plural. We worship you, Elohim. Yes, Elohim is plural, y'all. I'm going to say it again. Elohim. They don't realize they're saying, we worship you, many gods. <laughs> when they use the term Elohim, they're saying, we worship you, many gods. The great many gods. The great Elohim. They want to sound real sanctified. But the bottom line is, everywhere where it says God in that chapter, when you go into the Hebrew version of it, it's going to say Elohim everywhere. It still acknowledges it in the Bible. So God, here it is, verse 37, number 27. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them see they try to make it singular right there but if you acknowledge what the word God really means translated before that means dude there was some information before y'all came up with this and it meant something else Elohim so Elohim created in his own image in the image of Elohim created he him. So many gods created man in his own image. And the image of many gods created he him. Male and female created he them. Damn, so that's where it's at. And many wait, gods wait, hold on. And just read it like what it really means. And many gods bless them. And many gods said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And many gods. Because that's what that really means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, again, let's study, let's study. Verse 26. And many gods said, let us make man in our image. Don't that make sense? When you look at go to the origin. When you go, go to, to the, the origin. origin. Okay. Oh yeah, they ain't gonna do that for you. But if you go and you look and you get a Hebrew version of that, the Hebrew Bible, you're gonna find out that's what it is. So that's where it is. And I probably already had it down here in my studies a little bit lower. But let's let's get to where I was, right? We were still talking about uh, Mithras past, and Paul, right? He was past the green the, man. Good, good, good. Oh, we talked about Tammuz, right? Yeah. now. we didn't talk about Tammuz. We and talked about Tammuz Ishtar was. and Tammuz last time, didn't we? But I don't think we went into depth. Let's see. Oh, no. Cause we, did, did we talk about that? Let's see. I don't know. It's a lot of information, y'all. We went we over, didn't go Ishtar, over. we talked about Ishtar. We talked about Tammuz. Uh, a little bit. We talked about... Uh, Isis, See, so here, this is where I broke this down. So the Hebrew version of Genesis, right, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Um, Yeah, that's, that's, that's going way ahead of where I'm at. But I just broke that down for y'all. So, so that's to that. answer that question, right? So let's go back. Let's go back. And so here it is now. That definitely answered that question. Yes. So we still talking about uh, Saul and Paul and where he got all his information from okay so we ain't went too far yeah so now in the times battles if I'm yeah ooh, we ooh, we yes yeah. so now we was talking about right here we were talking about uh, my man, the Greek dude, right? We passed the green man, though, right? And the sun and the... 
No. No, we didn't we get still to that. We still got to go back to it. So now, here it is when Paul retired. Oh, so we even going back further. Let's go back a little bit more. So now, Paul was not a Jew when he arrived after a while into uh, Jerusalem, but he converted to the faith after falling in love with the daughter of a Jewish priest. That's where we left off, and he was seeking her hand in marriage. When his proposal was later rejected, Paul took his rage out on many Jews. So it was a female that turned him down. Hmm. He saw a female he wanted to marry. She turned him down and he got mad and he took it out on all of the Jews. The Jews were called, watch this, the, the Eboanites. E-B-I-O-N-I-T-E-S. The Eboanites. Basically the Ebony's. The, the Ebony. Ebony. Ebony is black. The Eboanites. <laughs> hmm. Did y'all get were, that? Did y'all catch that? They were called the poor ones. Mm. A Jewish sect. Watch this, because this was another. This was another Jewish sect that lived in the time frame that the Bible gave no reference to, like the Essenes. Just scratched them out of history, or tried to. The Eboanites. The black folks, the poor ones, a Jewish sect that championed the life story of a recent deceased Jewish holy man named Jeshua. Mm. Jeshua ben Joseph of Joseph. Jesus of Joseph. Mm. When Paul learned the entire story, he soon began to associate Jeshua with the Persian son. Hmm. <laughs> but before that, Paul, or Saul, was the true meaning of being a savage out here in these religious streets. Why? Because in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, if you go to Acts verse 9, chapter 1 and 2, this is what Saul was doing before he became Paul. Let's go to it. This is somebody else, Epiphany, Epiphanius, giving us reference to Saul and Paul and giving us some inside scoop on, oh yeah, I'm just going to speak plainly to y'all. So if I offend y'all, I'm apologizing now. But yeah, this is like Epiphany. It's like, yeah, so I, I saw the nigga. He got mad because I remember when he went to go try to, try to holler at old girl and she turned him down. Maybe her daddy was like, I ain't with it. And ooh, that burnt him. He got mad. So he went back, you know, to the religious leaders and all of that stuff. And he started rounding up all of the Jewish people and killing them and putting them in prison and all of that. He just took his wrath out on the death. Now, to be real... If we was to read that off of how the street code go, mm -hmm. Paul was a straight sucker for doing something like that. You sounded like the straight up 80s when you said that. He was a simp. He was, a he simp. was whack for doing that, y'all. This is from an account of a highly regarded religious leader of the Christian church. Remember I said that this ain't Joe Blow from down the street who happened to get drunk at the bar all the time <laughs> and then just be like, yeah, but I write and scribe and so here, yeah, therefore I just take account of things that I feel are interesting. No. This was a real religious leader that took account of this. So Acts chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. Verse 1. And saw yet breathing out threatenings and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord went into the high priest, verse 2, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. That's 
say he was out there wilding. He was a savage. He was mad because a woman didn't take his hand in marriage. A black woman. Mm -hmm. Hmm. His suspicions of their special link grew stronger when he remembered a Persian prophecy that Mithras would return to the earth at the end of time. Remember that phrase, the end of time? That we heard throughout time from everyone else who had the story of Jesus, who prophesied it that they would come back at the end of, at time. the end of times, the last days, for the one last battle with Araman. In Armageddon. <laughs> According to the temple priests of Jerusalem, the world was at the end of the age of Aries. You hear that? Hmm. They was what? At the end of the age of Aries. Now, what is Every that? Every age is 2,160 years. years long. Okay. And why is that important? They're actually going off of the stars to tell time so now when it reaches the end of a whole zodiac cycle right Which of that 2, sign 2160 years, years then they saying we near the end of times that sounds familiar right yeah and he was getting down when uh he was getting down when uh, Mithras time frame Mithras was about time, he had right. peaked and it was about to end watch this that's why it makes perfect sense that Mithras would then have reincarnated as Yeshua or the Hebrew version Yeshua because they use the letter Y Yeshua Hmm. And the most convincing event that influenced Paul's thinking was yet to come, however. Now understand, now he's grew older, he's diligently studying the scriptures, and this same Saul, with the permission of the Jewish leaders, began to persecute and jail the Christians by the droves. He believed that they were teaching false doctrine and were leading many Jews away from the truth. We talking about the dude that was, he wasn't Christian. Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 4. Can I just back up some? Back up where? What you was just talking about. What? You were just talking about the ages, right? Okay. I just want to give y'all something mm -hmm. right quick, right? Mm -hmm. So, the ages with the, uh, with the, with the Zodiac signs right and so he said that that was the age ending the age of Aries right well remember y'all gonna know this okay every age is 2160 years mm -hmm. right yeah roughly Myth, yeah. roughly mm -hmm. Mithras was 2160 <laughs> years right which was in the age of Aquarius after the age Asia. of Aquarius no okay. not Aquarius Aries, the Aries. Mm -hmm. it was in the age of Aries mm -hmm. after the age of Aries is the age of Pisces right the age of mm -hmm. Pisces yes, is baby. the age of Christianity right mm -hmm. the age of Pisces is Jesus remember they said Jesus died a little over 2,000 years ago 2,160 years, years is a age right mm -hmm. well remember when the Mayan calendar and they said the Mayans were sent in 2012 in that the world was going to end right the end of the world the end of times the end of times yeah. right in the last days 2012 came and they said ha ha the Mayans were wrong. The calendar was wrong. It was not the end of the world mm -hmm. or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was the end of an age. In right. 2012, the end of times ended <laughs> the age of Pisces. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Which we are now from 2012. We are now in the age of Aquarius, which the age of Aquarius <laughs> is the water is the bearer. The water bearer, right? Mm. And so Jesus even talks about 
<laughs> the water bearer and where going go into the house them, where you yeah. can find to the house into the house zodiac yeah. stri- yep. into the house yeah okay yeah baby like you know we can go on and on and on mm-hmm. but i hope y'all di- are y'all kind of getting like where this is and, and then the where? age of aquarius is means is a new way yeah right it's a new, it's a new way. way rich it's an old way but yeah, it's, a it's a new, new way, way basically coming back around yes. that's that's what that is okay the mass awakening people so are now waking up people are you're waking hearing people up, say waking up. vibration and frequency and resonance and all of these different things mm-hmm. right we're not saying that we know we weren't talking about that just a little bit, bit ago it just seemed like it just boom just hit us all of a sudden well it's because we're in a new age so now Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 4 verse 1 and Saul was consenting unto his death and at the time at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles yep just like the song back in the day what age of Aquarius Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. As for Saul, watch this, pardon me, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore, they, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. This occurred during his journey to Damascus when the Roman soldier was blinded by an overwhelming light then thrown off of his horse. And as a long established lover, watch this, of Mithras, Paul would have instantly associated the intense light as being a manifestation of his beloved solar deity. Again, the most convincing event that influenced Paul's thinking was yet on its way. And then when a voice emerged from the light calling itself Joshua and imploring him not to persecute his followers anymore, Paul knew for certain that Mithras must indeed be synonymous with Joshua. Or Yeshua or Jesus. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, mm. verses 3 through 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 9. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why per- persecuteth thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou? Right? And the Lord said, I am what? Jesus. And if you were to translate the word Jesus, it's probably going to break down to who? (laughs) Yeshua. And depending on the translation, it may say, What? Yeshua. Okay. (laughs) Or Isos. Or Zeus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> depending on where you at. Depending on Ooh, where you translate. Wee. Depending on where you translate. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. <laughs> Mind blown. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and, aston- and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So here it is now. Saul, or yeah, he still saw, has witnesses that there was a voice that came out of the damn wind or something. Okay? And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Verse 9, and he was three days without sight, three days, blind, in darkness. 
neither did eat nor drink fasting and then he was uh, given knowledge or sight so that's some biblical references for your A to chew on right there <laughs> Okay. Now, when Paul retired from his military service, soon afterwards he traveled throughout the Middle East in order to alert the Gentiles of his discovery that the world Savior had come and gone. And in the process of his travels, he created the new religion, what? Christianity. Within this new faith, Mithras was fully assimilated into Jesus. Who then wielded the life stories, titles, and characteristics once solely ascribed to the ancient Persian son. His new titles included one with the father and the one and the, the only son of God. Thanks to St. Paul. I'm allowed to say, so did Paul go on a journey? Amanda said, mm. not just biblical, but obviously a uh, sight process. Hmm. Okay. Mm. So now. What do it sound like to you, Yolanda? Right. <laughs> Here it is, St. Paul. St. Paul now then basically brought the ancient green man story. It just received a new suit and some new clothes, possibly because as people, Jesus. Listen, they be out in the wilderness. They be out in the forest. Okay. And they got to eat. So now look. This whole thing about the ancient green man really... It's, it's some old world stuff. This is during the what they call Neolithic age. And this is basically uh, the final stages of the Stone Age. Okay. Which was the era when, as some would say, God was a woman. <laughs> the goddess and her son. The green man. Now, I have not... I've done studies for this. I just didn't write all of this down. But the Gnostics call wisdom, right? Or logos, the word and wisdom, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Gives it a woman's name. And they believe that there's this spark, like a shard. And the shard was broken into seven pieces, I believe. Or, here's another version of it. This shard of light, wisdom, knowledge, truth, right, knowledge, knowing, Gnostic. If you break the word Gnostic down, mm -hmm. it's going to break down into knowledge. And they called it Sophia. They believe that this piece of knowledge or shard is broken up and fragmented and every human being has a piece of it inside of them. Mm -hmm. So now, Facts. can y'all feel and see how the philosophies and the ways of belief through mythology, which is someone having a conversation and a story being told and it being passed down, from someone who probably lived outside of the city was being carried forth and passed like a baton throughout time. Okay, so now the green man was highly revered and respected by people worldwide annually for bringing forth the earth's material abundance. A universal story about them arose that began with the annual impregnation of the virgin earth goddess by the sun, the father in heaven, and then the birth of her son, the green man. This important event occurred annually at the time of the winter solstice, when the spirit of the green man that had been slumbering underground, which they considered it to be the underworld, whenever the sun set, and they couldn't see it anymore. They believed that the sun was fighting against for the evil forces in the underworld. And would come out victorious every single day. Over the moon. Okay. Every single day this happened. So. Although. This took place. Guess when. 
December the 25th when the sun or the solar spirit completely reversed its downward path and took steps along the northerly route. This was a, as, a, as an important as above, so below event. Um, yes. What I to say mm -hmm. is that where Gnostics come from. I mean, a, a Gnostics come from Gnostics. So yes, sorry, yes, Gnostics. Uh, yes, questions. the Gnostic no, belief. You're not asking too many questions. No, you're not asking too many questions. The Gnostic belief is that. Yes. Right? So. They believe that God was a woman or wisdom and knowledge and truth and all was encased right within the feminine. It's cool. I'm not mad at that because it's still duality. You got to come through the portal of a, a, portal of of a, a woman, woman anyway. anyway. So what is a What's portal? What's the problem? It is a portal, guys. <laughs> it is a magical portal. You are bringing life into the world through a portal. Yes. Your uh, what is it the uh, the tree of life that's inside of the body? Mm. It is the um, mm. Mm. the um, placenta. Mm -hmm. And you look at the placenta. The you placenta, lay it out, you right? Lay it out. Mm -hmm. It looks exactly like a tree. Mm -hmm. It is the mm -hmm. tree of, of life. life. All of the nutrients and everything goes from this placenta, and it feeds the baby, right? And you have to get rid of the placenta after mm -hmm. the baby comes out, mm -hmm. after the birth. It is a portal. It is a portal. It's a gateway. It is a gateway. Yeah. So now, because it was believed that the renewed and revitalized solar spirit above in the heavens had reawakened and revitalized the spirit of his son below and inside of the earth, and now... The future green man could begin his annual gestation period, right, mm. with the womb of his mother, which was the virginal earth, mm. in anticipation of receiving a new resurrected body in the what? Spring time. Mm -hmm. And how it talks about in the book of the scenes how um, the earth gave uh, <laughs> Jesus his, his, his earthly body Mother Earth gave Jesus his mm -hmm. Earthly body Yeah, yeah. It, it was just the same the thing The Mother right? Earth gave everybody their earthly bodies yeah. And we're going to return our bodies to her Is to what he earth, says right? To the earth Don't we y'all Don't, don't they? Okay So now A feature of this evolving storyline Was that the green man now took on an additional role Of king of the world Which he governed Under the authority of his Watch this earthly mother and in some renditions of the story the son was said to have met his death in the fall in the fall at the hands of his unscrupulous brother or a dark evil lord hence which is why we see the depictions of the egyptian god osiris his skin tone is green on the walls of some of the pyramids yes yes the green man the green man <laughs> now ishtar in Tammuz, in the cities of Mesopotamia, again, this Neolithic story, it transforms into the story of the goddess as Inanna, which is I-N-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, or Ishtar, I-S-H-T-A-R. You can look it up. The goddess Inanna, I-N-A-N-N-A. Or Ishtar, I S H T A R, who annually gave birth to a green man son and future king under the name, watch this, Damuzi, which is D A M M U Z I, or Tammuz, T A M M U Z. Okay, I'll put that down in the. Uh... Mm -hmm. It was said that Tammuz grew up to mate with his own mother. Listen to this. Tammuz grew up to mate with his own mother while also governing the earth for her. So, for the ancient story to be reflected in their culture, the inhabitants of the fertile crescent and thorned rulers of the city, states who were acknowledged to be the embodiments of Tammuz and the royal servants of the goddess, Ishtar. Now, the Bible, I said, gives acknowledgement to the god Tammuz in Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 13 through 15. Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 13 through 15. This is where the prophet Ezekiel who is speaking shares his vision. 
So, Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 13 through 15. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for who? <coughs> who were they weeping for? Tammuz Then said he unto me That's verse 15 Hast thou seen this O son of man Turn thee yet again and thou shalt see Greater abominations than these Here God supernaturally Reveals to the prophet Ezekiel Some of the secret sins Of the nation of Israel One of these sins Is Lamenting for a pagan god named Tammuz. Who was Tammuz and why would women be weeping for Tammuz? This nature god was associated to yearly festivals. One held in late winter and the other in early spring. The cult of Tammuz centered around two yearly festivals. One celebrating his marriage to the goddess Ishtar and the other lamenting his death at the hands of the demons from the underworld. Does that make sense? This is over 2,000 years before Jesus Christ <clears throat> had even been born. So now, watch this. This story is a modern day story that's talked about the marriage of God which was dramatically celebrated in February through March, Uma's month of the festival of Tammuz. Guess what this actually represents, y'all, in our time frame now? The correlation between celebrating Tammuz. Have you ever heard of the holiday or celebration Mardi Gras? <laughs> and or Valentine's Day. The origin of Mardi Gras goes far beyond the Roman Catholic Church and is actually thought to have origins in Roman festivals like, watch this, Saturn Alia. Saturn Alia. That is named after the planet Saturn. Nico said what and Amanda said so much to unpack it's more than fascinating. Yes. So what that I mean rewind that part. Yes. <laughs> so now the cult of Tamu centered around two yearly festivals. Can you celebrate Mardi Gras in February and or then celebrate it in the month of March? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can how about how about Valentine's Day? Is Valentine's Day celebrated in the month of when? February. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, one celebration is celebrating Tammuz's marriage to the goddess Ishtar. And the other one is people lamenting the death of Tammuz because... He suffered his death at the hands of the demons from the underworld. Remember, the sun would then set and then boom, go down. They thought, oh man, the sun is down in the underworld fighting. And each day that it rose, it won. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, we're talking about Roman, here it is, Roman festivals like Saturnalia and Lupercalia. Lupercalia was a celebration of Lupercus. Lupercus. L U P E R C U S. Lupercus. Which was a Roman god of fertility. And it precedes 40 days of fasting. What's 40 days of fasting in the Christian religion? Do they call it? Lent 40 days 
So some of the modern day traditions such as customs and masks come from this celebration and it's thought that as pagans converted to Christianity, they didn't want to give up the festival. So the early Roman Catholic Church desi decided to Christianize it and make it part of their religious calendar. Hmm. They didn't want Okay, in other words, you say you're going to serve our one and true living God. So, you guys are threatening if you can't celebrate this, this festival that you won't convert. So, we'll just add it to our calendar. As long as you subscribe to our religion. Do y'all see how this is going in history? This became carnival. Carnival, where they celebrated in Latin countries. Carnival. Rio de Janeiro. And they out there and they got their costumes on and they celebrating this stuff. As a matter of fact, neither Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, and Ash Wednesday are in the Bible, are they? <laughs> but they're all Christianized quote unquote pagan <laughs> events though unlike Valentine's Day however Lupercalia was a bloody violent and sexually charged celebration with animal sacrifice random sexual matchmaking and coupling in hopes to watch this ward off evil spirits and produce what fertility ward off ward infertility off infertility and produce fertility mm -hmm. the god of fertility lubricus the god of fertility valentine's day hmm the celebrations in March and April that marked the death of the God also seem to have been extremely dramatically performed, right? So they would have processions out in the desert where the followers would then, right, uh, of the slain God would go out in the desert and they would spend time doing this. They spend time. Now, guess what? There are many spinoffs of this. Have you ever heard of the festival, The Burning Man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This stuff is deep. The worship of Tammuz also has something to do with the sign and symbol of the cross. According to the historian Alexander Hislop. Alexander Hislop was a free church of Scotland minister known for his criticisms of the Roman Catholic Church. He was the son of Stephen or Stephen Hislop, a mason by occupation and an elder of the Relief Church. Now, what was the Relief Church? The Relief Church was a Scottish Presbyterian denomination founded in 1761. In 1847, it united with the United Succession, uh, Succession Church to form the Presbyterian Church of Scotland. Tammuz was intimately associated with the Babylonian mystery religions, starting with the worship of Nimrod, Semiramis, and her illegitimate son, Horus. Now, the original form of the Babylonian letter T looked like the crucifix. A tall T with the cross at the very top of it almost. And this was a symbol called a Tau. T-A-U. It was called a Tau. Identical to the crosses used today in the world's Christianity religion. This was the initial of Tammuz. So anybody that walked around with a cross on their forehead. Or wore a chain Watch this with the cross hanging on it. Really was wearing it in worship and recognition to the God Tammuz. Do you see 
in the Roman Catholic Church where bishops and some bishops in non-denominational organizations wear long chains with the cross on it and they probably have no idea that they're wearing the cross of Tammuz. Her mind is blown. <laughs> Good. Because that'll get you to ask some questions. The mystic Tau or cross was marked in baptism on the foreheads of those initiated in the mystery schools. The vestal virgins of pagan Rome wore it suspended from their necklaces as the nuns do in modern time today. Mm -hmm. There is hardly a pagan tribe where the cross has not been found. Now I want you to understand. I said symbolism. God works and moves in symbolism as well. Y'all see they call it pagan, right? Y'all see they calling it back to that word pagan again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now they talking about it more so with uh, with Christians. There you go. Exactly. How about the letter X? Which in itself was not an unnatural symbol of Christ. The letter X was also utilized in this form. They would hang people or nail them on the cross, the letter X cross, and pop, 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 pop their hands into the wood and their feet in the wood where they would be stretched out like the letter X. Hmm. Here it is, the sign of the cross, this T, the Tau, the indisputable sign of Tammuz, which the Roman Catholic Church would come behind them and say, that this sign was of the false messiah. Yolanda says so in Catholic school uh, <laughs> we had to get a cross drawn on our forehead every Ash Wednesday. The sign of Tammuz. <laughs> wow. Here's the, I want y'all to understand this. How about we talked about uh, I think on the last one we talked about Dagon. Right? Yes. Um, Dagon is the fish god and um, when you go back and you look at the uh, the Catholic Church and, and, and bishops and all that, the 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 hat that they that they wear, it is mm -hmm. uh, the mitre. The mitre. Mm -hmm. The mitre. That's what they, it's wear, called, right, the mitre. they wear the mitre, and it is in reverence to uh, Dagon, the fish god. The mitre looks like the mouth of a fish. Right, mm -hmm. and all this was what in the age of the Pisces, <laughs> and they called Jesus the fisherman of men. men. Yeah, and he fed them with fish and mm -hmm. bread. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and he told you, "I'll teach you how to be a fisherman of men." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now. This is how important symbolism is. I'm just going to get into this real quick. Y'all know the swastika? The swastika, the symbol. If you say the swastika, you, you, you should know. Like the, Hitler, the whole the Hitler, the, German, the Adolf Germany, Hitler's. Hitler, okay. All that. Understand that Hitler took the symbol because of its original meaning. Please look this up for y'all self, y'all. For mm -hmm. real. So y'all can see it with y'all own eyes. Y'all not just talking about what we... uh. The swastika originally... She said, right, and the sign of Christianity is a fish. Yes. The age, the age of, of Pisces. Pisces. It's connected it's to the stars. It's, it's connected to the zodiac. Yes, it all is connected, it's all connected to, the to the zodiac. Representing a time frame. An age. God said that the stars and everything would be what? Signs for what? The times? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, here it is, the swastika. The swastika, if somebody was to slap that on on somebody's property, to be like, oh, it's a hate crime now, right? It's a hate crime now. But originally, the swastika, the symbol of the swastika, 
represented prosperity and good fortune. And it was widely distributed throughout the ancient and modern world. The word is derived from the Sanskrit svastika, S-V-A-S-T-I-K-A, -S meaning conducive to well-being. That's what the swastika means. It was a popular symbol on ancient Mesopotamian coinage. Mm, Mesopotamia is present-day Iran. So now here it is. This is what happens when someone takes a symbol or something else and they change the meaning of it and get people to move into that mentality. It's called an egregor. An egregor. That's E G R E G O R E. After we finish this, we then we'll break that down, down and yes. shut it down. So the egregor. I want you to understand this. The egregor. The E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E -E -E is an occult concept representing a non-physical entity that arises from the collective thoughts of a distinctive group of people. So, Adolf Hitler came and said, I'm going to take this symbol that probably people don't even recognize or understand anymore. And I'm going to attach right a concept to it and i'm going to have people slap slamming their arms up pointing and doing all of this stuff and saying how hitler to me right to him really meaning good fortune and prosperity to the, the people of their nation that's what he meant he just took it and they was killing everybody and that's exactly what they was getting, prosperity. In the name of slapping a symbol that originally meant for good. So, with that being said, I mean, I can really get into this stuff. I'll do this to, to leave it. I'll do this to leave it. Again, I want to break down a list of people that we went over and so so that I said I didn't just for you to be able to make the reference points let's go with Addis that's the one that I didn't add and, and then I put them on at the very uh, end of the beginning of the list Addis A-T-T-I-S of Phrygia that's P-H-Y R-I-G-I-A Addis of Phrygia P-H-Y R I G I A. Addis was born in Greece, 1200 BC. Born of the Virgin Nana on December the 25th. He was crucified. He was placed in a tomb, and after how many days? Three was resurrected. Same as Jesus. If we go to India, <coughs> Krishna of India, born in 900 BC before Christ born of the virgin Devaki D-E-V-A-K-I Devaki with a star in the east signaling his his coming mm -hmm. perform miracles with his disciples and upon his death was resurrected that's Krishna of 900 BC in India Okay, Greece, 500 B.C. Dionysus of Greece. We already broke that down. Mm -hmm. Born of a virgin on December the 25th. Was a traveling teacher who performed miracles such as turning water into wine. He was referred to as the king of kings and God's only begotten son. The Alpha and Omega, <laughs> and many other names. Upon his death, what happened? Guess what? He was resurrected. Dionysus. 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 Yes. Here it is in Persia, 1200 BC. Mithra. We already talked. Mithra. 
born of a virgin on December the 25th. He had 12 disciples and performed miracles. And upon his death was buried for three days and then resurrected. He was also referred to as the truth and the light. And many other names. Interestingly, the sacred day of worship of Mithra was Sunday. <laughs> so, the fact of the matter is, is that there are a numerous amount of Savior stories from different time periods from all over the world which subscribe to many general characteristics. Like, why do they have the same attributes? Why the virgin birth? Why on December the 25th? Why did they die for three days and then inevitably resurrect? Why the 12 followers? Right? The 12 disciples. You got to ask yourself these questions. If you really ask the first question that we talked about. I just want to know the truth, God. When you get fed up and you get tired of seeing no results, you praying, ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing mm -hmm. changing, it feels like it's getting worse, then you got to tap in. You're going to eventually ask that question. You're going to say, I need to know. Right? So, I mean. And that's when everything is going to line up and it's going to start coming to you. But for them that have an ear, let them hear. If you got the ear, then listen. Especially if you don't put the call out. If you don't put the call out, then don't be uh, turning your back mm. on wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you get stuck where you at for the next 10 years like and oh then man the next 20 years and then so on and so on i know you're about to break nothing there's something else down no but what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna let them know that the I'm next sleeping. one is also gonna be i love you it's also gonna be about the information of churches and them sitting in certain spots and the connection of the astrological powers and the symbols inside of the churches laying on ley lines and meridian points that have probably all been established and built over mystery schools, mystic schools, caves and tombs where all these mystic ceremonies have been done. Right? Because people did ask when we first started breaking this down, well, what is it about the ley lines and the meridian points? They just felt like this was a a stronger point where spiritual energy and activity would take place. So what would be the better place to erect a church than somewhere where people were already practicing spiritual practices that were heightened because of just the geographical location? Right? And so we're going to break some of that down to symbolism. I didn't get a chance to get all off until when I say this stuff is a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot of stuff. But it needs to prepare your mind for the ability to be able to just ask questions. Now, what I just gave y'all was a steak dinner. And if you a baby in this, you ain't going to be able to handle this steak dinner. You might as well just have threw the steak on the floor. But if you are to the place and the point where you like, you really asking questions, you really been studying and digging, then you're going you gonna to get into it. So, with that being said, I guess we'll go back. What is, what will that be? Part three of this mug right now. I guess. I, I guess. But well, we, we just gonna be teaching. So we just gonna be teaching. What part we going to? What part we focusing on? Do you know where you're going to? Do you like things that we are showing you? <laughs> where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> you <are so> good. <laughs> All right, man. Look. With that being said, yeah, we love y'all. Do some studying, though. Like, can y'all please go into these gonna, reference we points? We're probably gonna come and back resources. live again when we go to Atlanta. We normally be going live on the days that we go into these different spots. It depends on how much rest we got. Yeah, but 
Yeah, how much stuff we have to do. Yeah, or how much stuff we got to do. But I definitely would love to. I just, I love going live in these different spots because the energy be different. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that's true. I think we're going to really try to make sure that we uh, go live on this this Thursday too. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep y'all posted. So just make sure y'all. Yeah. Love y'all. Watch. That's all. So, with that being said, we love y'all. Um, man, come y'all better come back like strapped and ready. Like y'all better have some info. We didn't just gave y'all so much information. We need to be having some serious, you know what I'm saying, engagement on y'all. I'm sleepy and being guess on what, what? Tip I'm about this to go is. in the room and I'm about to study some more. And you know what that means? Mm. Wow. I mean, while I'm studying, mm-hmm. I'm gonna probably be asleep. Yeah. Because yep. you know, yep. the page is gonna, gonna, gonna last knock your behind out. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm tucking so you in like, oh, I need a baby. And I just thank y'all so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. This peace and love. That's and happiness. Did. Oh, yeah. What up, though, sis? Peace, love, and hair grease. Okay. All right, then. Peace, love, soul, and hair grease. Is that what they say? I don't know. I'm oh, too tired no. to even. I'm tired, remember. too. All right. Love y'all, man. Love we y'all. get back with y'all. Peace. We out.